Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 21st, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. 103 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. President Trump is now officially demanding, he's in fact ordered now, uh, his Justice Department, Sleepy Sessions, the FBI, to now formally investigate whether the FBI conducted an illegal spying operation. I'm telling you they did, the whole world knows they did, for quote-unquote political purposes. Bombshell development over the weekend, Stephen Halper a current now professor at Cambridge University. However, he's an American. He owns a large farm in Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. He goes back to three Republican administrations. He was a rabid, never-Trump Republican. In fact, openly voted for Hillary in 2016. He said so in an interview. He was the mole that the CIA under Brennan first recruited and then was planted by the FBI... It now turns out that he was secretly recording Carter Page, George Papadopoulos, Trump's campaign co-chair Sam Clovis, pretending to be a supporter of the president, in fact offering himself as a kind of foreign policy advisor, quote unquote, but really he was trying to get information on whether the Trump campaign was or had been colluding with the Russians. It was an inside job. It was orchestrated by Brennan. It was orchestrated by Clapper. It was signed off by James Comey. It was executed by the deep state, in which now they were openly spying on a rival campaign and on a rival political candidate. This has never been done that we know of in American political history. Remember, Watergate was about the break-in at the Watergate headquarters of the DNC. And the big crime was that it was the purpose was to spy on the DNC. That's why it was such a big scandal. Now we're talking about something infinitely bigger. The official collusion and weaponization of our intelligence community in which a covert rogue CIA operation with the FBI, with Obama's Department of Justice, in collusion with Hillary Clinton and the DNC, went after President Trump, now employing an official spy on their behalf. So, listen now to Mark Levin, who I think hit the nail right on the head, saying, what you saw... And that's why now we're in a constitutional crisis, as the constitutional lawyer Ted Olson put it. A constitutional crisis is now brewing with this scandal now being broken wide open. Listen now to Mark Levin rightly say, this is what you see in dictatorships, in authoritarian regimes, where they are out to destroy dissent and the opposition party. This is the Soviet Union. This is communist China. This is Venezuela. This is not the United States of America. Roll it, Britain. Of course not. And I want to take this to the next level. Because the President of the United States will not be indicted. And if he is, uh, he'll take it to the Supreme Court and he'll win. All that said now, we cannot allow this to happen again. We saw our federal government used by the prior administration, by the head of the CIA, by the head of the FBI, by the head of national intelligence, and many, many others, used to try and destroy the candidacy of an opposition candidate in another party, Donald Trump and the Republican Party. That is, the president's administration, the existing administration, interfering in the elections. We've never seen anything like this before in American history. So here's what we need to do. We now know that the Obama administration spied, spied. Look, it's the Obama administration. He's the president. The buck stops at his desk. He may be playing around with his library in Chicago and going off and and writing a phony book and everything. He's to be held responsible and his surrogates are to be held responsible. The FISA court failed us. The FISA court failed us. 
We have these national security letters that are supposed to be used in extreme circumstances being used. We have a cabal of FBI agents who took it upon themselves to investigate a candidate and his campaign. And then we have, of course, actual spies, one or more, in the Trump campaign. What the hell is this? The Soviet Union, Venezuela, it's the United States of America. So let me say this. Once Mr. Mueller, Mr. Mueller turns over his report to Mr. Rosenstein, the President of the United States should do two things. He should pick his favorite United States attorney, not favorite because they're pals, but the most professional, most competent, most aggressive he can, and give him an assignment. Go after him. Now, this is in fact what Trump, Trump actually, I think, took this advice a little bit early. He has now ordered the Department of Justice. It's now taking place as I speak to you. It's already been launched to, uh, to now start an official probe into how the FBI and the CIA used Stefan Halper as a spy to infiltrate and undermine and subvert the Trump campaign. Now, as this story is now going everywhere like wildfire, because now they don't know what to do. The deep state's been exposed completely. Obama's DOJ has been exposed completely. Loretta Lynch, she's the one that authorized it. Remember, Comey was the one who signed off on it. He couldn't have signed off on it unless Loretta Lynch, then the attorney general, authorized it. So this goes higher and higher and higher. So now the Democrats, the Democratic media industrial complex, they're now in huge spin mode. They got to lie through their freaking teeth if they want to survive this. So they, they paraded them one after another, okay, like zombies in front of the Sunday talk shows. I want you to listen first to, um, let's start with Clapper. You want to do Clapper, Brittany? Okay, let's do Clapper. By the way, the guy who perjured himself, this guy should be in jail, but he's not out of the woods. Believe me, he's not out of the woods. Listen to this perjurer and liar. Now say, well, you see, they're, they're making two arguments. He wasn't the spy. He was uh, overseeing. He was investigating. He, so he's not a spy. But if he was a spy, it's a good thing. So he's not a spy. But okay, if he is a spy, it's a good thing. We need more spies like Halper, sorry, Halper to penetrate Donald Trump because Trump poses a threat to American democracy. Roll it, Britain. Well, I think it's this is a uh, hyperbole. Hyperbole. Mm. Uh, they may have had someone uh, uh, who was talking to them mm. uh, in uh, uh, in the campaign. Yeah. But you know the focus here, and as it was with the intelligence community, is not on the campaign per se, but what the Russians were doing mm. to try to to instantiate themselves mm. in the campaign or to influence or leverage it. Mm. So if there was someone that was observing that sort of thing, uh, well, that's a good thing. That's a good uh, thing. The, the Russians pose a threat to the to our the very basis <sighs> of our political system. Our whole way of life. And I think it's hugely uh, dangerous. If someone like that is exposed because uh, the danger to that person, oh. not to mention the reluctance of others to, ser to be informants for the FBI. And the FBI gains a lot of valuable information mm. from mm. Uh, informants. Mm. Look at this. Look at this. So now, mm, Stefan Halper. Oh, his life is in danger now. Oh, oh, this is really it's Guys, we don't want sunlight. The last thing we want is sunlight. We don't want the world to know are illegal, shadowy, unconstitutional, frankly, sleazy behavior. No, we don't want them. So what do you, what do you, where do you stop? I, I have to ask this. You want spies at Fox News? Do you want spies at the Wall Street Journal? Do you want spies here on this show, on the Kuna Report? You want what? You want spies now on the House Intelligence Committee? Where does it end? If you start putting informants and spies... To knock off a rival political campaign in, let's say, Donald Trump. You think it stops with Donald Trump? That's why I thought one of the previous callers hit the nail on the head. They were doing this the whole time under Obama. Whether it be the IRS, weaponizing that, going after the Tea Party, whether they were going after journalists, whether they were spying on the media, that was their modus operandi. Now, they did it to a major presidential candidate who, oops, stunned them and managed to win the election. 
So what they said was, we better bring this guy down over Russia, because if we don't, we're all going to hang. Well, let the hanging begin. Now, listen to that liar, shifty shift. Listen to this fraud. Listen to this fraud. So now they put him out there and they go, well, see, spying now is not spying. Listen now to, listen now to shifty shift. No. <laughs> spying. Come on. <laughs> spying. What do you mean spying? It was, uh, you know, he was, he was, uh, looking into, he was investigating. He was, he was just sniffing around. That's all. He, when he invited George Papadopoulos under false pretenses to go to London on $3,000, being this young, inexperienced guy who never did much in his life, I gave him $3,000 to uh, write a paper on energy pipelines in Turkey. And I kept pumping him along with this uh, attractive Turkish assistant who said, I'll sleep with you, George. All I want from you is information on Russia. OK, and they were throwing him lavish dinners when Halper and his Turkish uh, assistant were doing this. No, they weren't spying on Papadopoulos. They were they were they were doing their patriotic duty. That's all. That's all. Roll it, Brittany. Uh, you know, I don't want to characterize uh, what this individual may or may not be, uh, but I do want to say the Justice Department, the FBI, even the White House, although clearly not the president, uh, has said that revealing in information about this individual could uh, compromise uh, people's lives. Yeah. It could uh, yeah. betray a relationship with our allies. Yeah. Uh, it could compromise the investigation. Yeah. And the president's response and Chairman Nunes, uh, Jordan and Gowdy and others is bring it on. Uh, we don't care. Whatever is in the service of the president we're willing to do. This is a dramatic and new and destructive low, I think, for the Congress of the United States. Uh, basically to ignore the warnings of the FBI and Justice Department uh, and potentially risk people's lives. Uh, what they would like this information for is clearly to uh, be of service to the Trump defense team uh, yeah. and, uh, and further any narrative they have. Uh, the most I can tell you, Chuck, is that this claim by the president, the suggestion by Giuliani that there is a political spy embedded in the Trump campaign is right. nonsense. Uh, and you hear it in the same terms that Trump often speaks, which is, People are saying, or I'm hearing, or we're being told. That's another way of saying this is patently untrue, but we would like to spread it anyway. Uh, and it's singularly destructive of our institutions, but then that's the point. All right. Unbelievable. By the way, he's on with Chuck U. Todd. All right, so Chuck U. was lapping it up, by the way. Oh, Chuck U. loved it. Come on. So let me get this straight. You guys are running an illegal, covert, CIA, FBI, deep state operation where you put in a spy, an informant, whatever you want to call him, Stefan Halper, who is, you're the one, and he's secretly recording Carter Page, George Papadopoulos, and now we find out Sam Clovis, the Trump co-chair. And you're the victims? <laughs> I mean, this is incredible. What are they so afraid of? You know, the Democrats always talk about transparency. Let's have full and open transparency. Declassify everything. I want to know, when did this FBI operation begin? I want to know who officially authorized it. If this was all on the up and up, guys, what are you afraid of? Instead, they have been fighting tooth and nail to release any documents. You know why? Because they're all guilty as sin. My friends, let me tell you the big story. The CIA was toppling governments for years. And instead of toppling foreign governments, in 2016, they, the FBI, the deep state, in collusion with the Hillary campaign, said, we're going to topple an internal government, or in this case, an internal campaign. Donald J. Trump. That's what happened. If we are to survive as a republic and a democracy, heads must roll. Number one head, John Blank U. Brennan. 121 here on the great WRKO. Okay, the war is on. President Trump versus John Brennan. Trump versus the deep state. Brennan now has tweeted out threatening 
publicly threatening Ryan and McConnell, saying if the House Speaker and the Senate Majority Leader continue to, quote-unquote, enable Trump, there will be a tremendous price to be paid for the Republican Party. He's basically saying, we've got dirt on all of you, and we're going to start leaking it unless you call off Trump's investigation of our covert spying campaign to infiltrate the Trump campaign in 2016. They're openly now blackmailing lawmakers. And coming up at 135, you want to talk about a perfectly timed book? We're going to have Dr. Jerome Corsi on. He's the one that exposed John Kerry in the 2004 uh, presidential election with the Swift Boat veterans. He's got a new book out, Killing the Deep State. The fight to save President Trump. You don't want to miss that newsmaker interview. But first, Octavio in Vermont. Thanks for holding and welcome. Hey, Jeff. The first thing I want to say is I'm just so honored to be on your show. Thank you for what you're doing. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Octavio. What's on your mind, my friend? Listen, listen. I, I listen. I witnessed and lost so many people in a best friend and a career due to 9/11, Jeff. I've always been in shock over the obvious crimes concerning the Clinton family and their foundation. And, 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 and another thing, Jeff, you know, I've always been in shock on how the media is so completely fake. I'm in shock that America sold out uranium and worse, sold out Hollywood to the Chinese. <laughs> I mean, I, I just can't handle this. And, and, and listen, Jeff, as for this infiltration into the Trump campaign, I truly believe nothing will happen, and I have proof nothing will happen. Okay, now why, Octavia? Why do you think nothing will happen? Well, let's look at Hillary Clinton wearing a Russian hat at her recent college farce. I mean, that is a, a, a throw in the face of justice, number one, that shows there's no justice in America. And when the FBI, CIA, and the Department of Justice is most likely so corrupt, how could there be justice for a mole that was inserted in, the, in my man, Donald Trump's campaign? Octavio, thank you very much for your call. I appreciate it, Octavio. Um, look, we're going to have to see. It's a war. Uh, these are just the opening battles of this war. This war is going to go on. It's not going to be over today or tomorrow or next week. But to me, the most important thing is now we're fighting back. See, this is something that's never been done before. We have a president who's now openly fighting back. He's not being intimidated. He's not being coward. He's not being allowing himself to be blackmailed. He's publicly calling them out. And he's publicly exposing and attacking them on social media. That's why Brennan's going, like, he's going berserk. He's going nuts. So what I'm saying is, for us to win, we have to fight. And at least now we're fighting. Now, I can just tell you this. On the surface, it's clear. Crimes were committed. And I'm not talking jaywalking, parking tickets. I'm talking crimes against our democracy, crimes against our Constitution, crimes against our Bill of Rights. These are crimes that will send these people to jail for decades and decades to come. The question now is, does Trump have the stomach and the team to see this war through to the end? That's now going to be the question. But I can just tell you this. Joe DeGeneva does not say anything that is not fully corroborated. When he says the inspector general is going to recommend criminal referrals, he knows it. When he says Brennan is getting himself a criminal lawyer, he knows it. So, I, by the way, where's Big Mouth Comey? You see, you want to know something else that's telling? Yes, Hillary is taunting Trump with the Russia hat and everything. But notice Big Mouth Comey, who's always tweeting, always flapping his big mouth. Once Stephen Halper's name was revealed, how come Comey isn't blasting Trump? How come he's not making fun of Trump? How come he's not spoofing Trump? How come he's not mocking Trump? Suddenly, his big mouth has gone really silent. You know why? Because he signed off on it. And now he's like, ooh, I never thought that Nunez and Trump were going to go this far. They've outed Stephen Halper? Uh-oh. Now 
he's quiet as a church mouse because deep down he's scared. And if I were him, I would be right to be scared because my friends, what they did was the mother of all crimes. Don in New Hampshire, you're up next. Go ahead, Don. Jeff, Jeff, I love you in a non-sexual way. You are a true patriot, my friend. Oh, thank you, Don. I appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. Jeff, I need to know, uh, we've been talking, you know, uh, you and, and Levin and Hannity and Bongino and all these great Americans, we've been talking about people are in trouble. How can we hold anybody accountable, Jeff, if the Attorney General is impotent? Don, I'll tell you right now, and I, you got it. I can't characterize my sources. Let me just tell you this: I know for a fact. I know this for a fact from people within, high up in the Trump administration. That's all I can say. If Jeff Sessions does not aggressively move on this, he will be fired. And the reason why he will be fired, with the revelation now of Stephen Halper. See, that's why Trump is going public with all this now. By going public and talking about Stefan Halper, he's now given himself just cause to fire Sessions if Sessions does not move against Halper, doesn't move against Brennan, doesn't move against all of these enablers. Because now there's no getting around this fact. If Sessions does not move, I, just think about it. They put a spy in the, can, in the rival candidate's campaign. Unbelievable. If Unbelievable. now, if now, if Sessions does not move on this, it is grounds to fire him. Period. And nobody but in Congress can save him. What happens then, though, if, if, they, if Sessions is gone? Now we get Rosenstein at the top, and then they have to go through a whole a whole hearing to to get another Attorney General confirmed. I mean, they're going to slow walk that. The Democrats will slow walk that till till the cows come home. Yes, but by firing Sessions, it becomes a national story. And as it becomes a national story, again, the spying on Trump is going to get out there. And the American people are going to be absolutely outraged. And I think my, his play, he's going to move in Giuliani. The reason why he's got Giuliani now being his legal point man, he's setting Giuliani up to be the next attorney general. So my prediction is, if Sessions does not move big and aggressive on this, he's going to fire Sessions, and while the Republicans still have full control of Congress, he's going to ram through Giuliani as his AG. Now, I am telling you that if Giuliani becomes Trump's AG, you want to talk about killing the deep state? The deep state is going to, like the mob, they're going to be running for the hills. 617-266-6868. Okay, coming up in just five short minutes, I've got Dr. Jerome Corsi on. He's got an incredible book, Killing the Deep State, The Fight to Save President Trump. He knows where all the bodies are buried, and he's going to reveal it to us in five minutes. But first, two suspected murder murderers are in court today. Here's Denise Allen Membreno in the RKO newsroom with those details. What are they, Denise? One thirty-six here on the Great WRKO. Okay, you want to talk about perfect timing for a book? Doctor Jerome Corsi is on with us. He is the author now of a the, the best-selling book, Killing the Deep State, The Fight to Save President Trump. Dr. Corsi is also a best-selling American author, political commentator. You can read him on WorldNet Daily. Dr. Corsi, thank you so much for coming on the Cooner Report. It's great to be with you. Thank you again. Uh, Dr. Corsi, I've got to ask you, it's the ultimate news hook for your book. It's now come out that Stephen Halper was, in fact, a spy on behalf of the FBI, uh, maybe even with the CIA, to infiltrate the Trump campaign. How deep does the deep state's hatred for Trump go, and will they succeed in bringing down this president? Uh, they're not going to succeed in bringing down Donald Trump. I think uh, the tables are turning pretty fast. This Halper information, and by the way, it's now come out even today that Halper was paid over a million dollars going back into the Obama administration uh, to do various kinds of spying. Wow. Uh, okay, sorry, Dr. Corsi, I meant to cut you off. I had read 400,000. No. You're saying it's now a million. A, a million. A million wow. dollars. 
Wow. Zero, Zero Hedge just published the definitive article on it about a half an hour ago. And at ZeroHedge.com. Okay, no, I believe you. I'm just, uh, just wow. Okay, keep going. And so, you know, what, what this means is that the uh, Obama administration, together with John Brennan, I think this idea was concocted by Brennan and Podesta, uh, and Comey was the foot soldier who implemented much of it, is that they planted a spy uh, who was, whose deal, and I, think, I also think Carter Page was a spy, I'm pretty convinced Carter Page is a, is a paid FBI agent as well. And I think these two spies' job was entrapment. In other words, as I point out in Killing a Deep State, this was a coup d'etat conspiracy. And what Helper, help, uh, help, helper, helper and Carter Page's job was, was to talk to people like um, Jeff Sessions about Russia and Russia's sanctions and say maybe we can get Donald Trump to reduce the Russian sanctions, and that'll help relations with Putin, and get that on FISA electronic surveillance on tape, then they could have framed the uh, Trump campaign for collusion with Russia, because the quid pro quo was going to be the reduction of sanctions. And that's what they were hoping that they could lure the uh, Trump campaign into angling for, uh, because what they were going to argue was that the Russians, in exchange, stole the emails from the DNC and published them through WikiLeaks. That that was the whole original premise. And an entrapment scheme, uh, like Helper got involved in as a spy, uh, I think would mean that all the evidence is going to get thrown out of court. And this is the this is now I think the fatal the fatal link in the uh, at Mueller's supposed uh, investigation for Russian collusion. I think the whole house of cards falls down once we know, and as we do now, that the uh, Democrats are running a counter-intelligence operation against the opposition's GOP political presidential candidate. Uh, that's to be shocking. We are talking with Dr. Jerome Corsi. He has a new book out, bestseller, Killing the Deep State, The Fight to Save President Trump. Um, Dr. Corsi, I've got to ask you, I've got so many questions I'd love to ask you, but let me ask you this one. Why were the, why was Comey, why was Brennan, why was the FBI, the deep state, so determined to take down President Trump? What was their reason for doing this? They were all, they've all been deep statists. They've all been, um, enamored with this one world government idea uh, i think it, it slowed down during the reagan administration but certainly george h w bush onward this idea of you know the trade agreements leading us into a regional government one world currency no borders all the hillary clinton ideology at the hard left uh, the bureaucracy which is largely today college trained and they're entrenched for years, um, all shared the same ideology. When Donald Trump came on the scene, America first, going back to the Constitution, it scared them so badly that within the Department of Justice, I say it's shocking, but it started in the FBI, where they concocted this coup d'etat plan to ultimately be able to impeach Trump on Russian collusion, even if they had to invent the evidence to do so. What do you think Trump needs to do to, in your words, kill the deep state? How does he win this war? Well, a strategy I've been laying out, and I've been tweeting it, and hopeful, hopefully it'll get passed on to President Trump, I'm sure he's already figured it out, is that one of these cases that Mueller has brought, and I think this Russian troll farm case is, the, is a prime opportunity, the judge is going to rule prosecutorial misconduct and is going to dismiss the case. Once that's done, Mueller has a case thrown out of court and he's branded by the judge to have engaged in prosecutorial misconduct, maybe even criminal prosecutorial misconduct. Uh, Trump will have an opportunity to fire Mueller. And in the Russian troll case, uh, it, it turns out that Mueller indicted a company that did not exist at the time, in, in the United States, at the time that Mueller said it was operative, the employees 
for that company that Mueller named did not work for that company. And third, the uh, Department of Justice cannot produce translations of these Russian posts in Russian that were supposed to have been made on U.S. social media. Uh, the whole case, I think, was Mueller never imagined that these Russian companies were going to defend themselves, and he thought he would have no one show up for the trial, and he'd have no trial. But it's so poorly done that Mueller did, in fact, indict a ham sandwich, and is going to lose on that basis. Dr. Corsi, besides, and I think you're right, he's got to fire Mueller. I've been arguing that for a long time. But besides firing Mueller, you talk about this politicized bureaucracy, the politicized deep state. How does he purge the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, all of these deep state institutions who are rabidly anti-Never Trumpers? What does he have to do? Just clean house with personnel? Yes, and I think once he, uh, I, or I think fundamentally reduce their size and their scope. I mean, the NSA, I think, is massively collecting data on every American. Uh, I think we know that now from Snowden and others. And uh, this FISA court application, which seems to be given at the drop of a hat, approval, uh, is going to turn out to have conducted electronic surveillance on a lot of Americans who were talked to by Page or Helper. Because in collateral you know, association with the primary target. The FISA approval was only going to give, be given on Carter Page, but if he talks to Jeff Sessions, now Jeff Sessions can be under electronic surveillance. And if Sessions talked about um, eliminating or reducing the sanctions against Russia, uh, there was an investigation McCabe launched that, that Sessions lied during his confirmation hearings, a criminal investigation against Sessions that Sessions didn't know about until he became Attorney General. I Incredible. think that's why Sessions is scared to death. Incredible. Incredible. Uh, Dr. Corsi, we only have about two minutes left. What do you know about John Brennan? And do you think John Brennan is in trouble with all of the recent revelations regarding Stephen Halper and that the CIA may have been involved in this covert operation to infiltrate and spy on the Trump campaign? I think John uh, Brennan is up to it in his neck deep or higher. I mean, he's going to be facing criminal charges before too long, I believe, because he was part of the ones who concocted this whole Russian collusion out of thin air, hired the spies, promoted the idea uh, that the uh, Russians had hacked the computers of the Democrats, did not get those computers for independent examination. They've never been independently examined to see who did hack them. Uh, and um, the whole, uh, you know, Brennan was was Barack Obama's handler. He, with his private security firm, broke in and stole Obama's passport records before the election in 2008. He speaks Arabic. I'm confident he, uh, Brennan, turned Muslim. He was part behind the move where the CIA couldn't even investigate radical Islamic terrorism because Brennan said it didn't exist. Uh, Brennan's in this deep and he's going to be exposed for having concocted a criminal conspiracy that amounts to a coup d'etat to fabricate the basis on which Trump could be impeached and that constitutes treason. That's why Brennan is so scared. Um, a final, final ultimate question. Do you think Brennan will be indicted? Yes. I think Donald Trump is within a short period of time of being able to fire Mueller. And uh, this, is the, this will be the end of kind of like the first opening part of the chess game. And, the, you know, we're right at the beginning of the opening, and that, that means Mueller will be fired. When Mueller's fired, Donald Trump will fire Rosenstein and he'll fire Sessions. He'll clean out the uh, FBI, and he'll start a legitimate investigation, maybe with a special prosecutor appointed to investigate the Democrats based on Inspector General Horowitz's report, which will, I expect, to be damning. And from there, I think the end game, even if Donald Trump it takes him his entire first term, takes military tribunals, I've been saying Donald Trump will have the key people, including Brennan, and I think likely even Hillary Clinton, and Barack Obama facing treason charges. 
We have been talking with Dr. Jerome Corsi. He is a political commentator, a best-selling author. You can read his work at WorldNetDaily, WND.com. He is out with a new book. It's already a bestseller. I urge all of you to buy it, read it. Killing the Deep State, The Fight to Save President Trump. Dr. Corsi, you have been very generous with your time. I appreciate it, and thank you so much, sir, for coming on the Kuna Report. My great pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Take care. God bless you. 617-266-6868. Okay, you heard it right here from this best-selling author. He thinks Brennan is neck, if not eye deep in this, and that Brennan is going to go down, that this is the biggest scandal, essentially, since Watergate. Agree? Disagree? Can Trump tame the deep state? Or will Brennan and his fellow deep statists beat Trump? Your reaction next. 151 here on the great WRKO. Okay, coming up next at 205, you don't want to miss it. The latest on the Texas shooter. And now the obvious question. Could it and should it have been prevented? We'll discuss that, but first... Dr. Jerome Corsi, the author of Killing the Deep State, now makes a bold prediction. He says Brennan will go down, he will be indicted, and Robert Mueller will be fired. Agree? Disagree? Lines are loaded. Okay, he's back. He's back. Josh in Framingham. You're up next. Go ahead, Josh. Jeff, I'm sorry. I just had to call after that last guest. Uh, he's got me all confused. So Brennan set up this big conspiracy to implant spies in Trump's campaign to lure them into working with Russia, right? Actually, no. That's that's what he just said. Now, no, I see you. Do? See, I live in reality. You don't. Okay, then why he said that Carter Page was a spy and this other guy Stefan whatever was a spy that infiltrated the Trump campaign. Well, what it's Josh, what is very obvious now to anybody with half a brain, I'm really being serious. Well, let me just get to my oh, point Hold on, here. I'll get to your point. I promise, Josh, no, no, I promise, Josh, no, you're turn him down, off. turn him down, turn him down, turn him down. Josh, look, it's very obvious that the Steele dossier is bull, you know what, it's nonsense, that they framed the president, there was no collusion. The question is then, who created this false narrative? And what it's turning out to be is, it was created initially by the CIA and by the FBI, to go after the president, to frame him. And all Jerome Corsi is saying, and he's completely right, is that they were using this guy, Stefan Halper, as a spy to try to push their narrative. And they did. Would you deny that? What I got from his interview was that Stefan Halper and possibly Carter Page were trying to get lure these Trump guys into working with Russia. Now, the work that they did with Russia was to release emails and damaging information about Hillary Clinton's campaign. That's what the collusion would have been. Now, why would the deep state create a conspiracy to release information damaging to the candidate that they wanted to win? I, you, have, I, you, you completely lost me. Well, he's saying that they tried to lure the Trump campaign into colluding with Russia. Well, the collusion with Russia is that they work to release these... No, people. no, 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 no. I yeah, guess maybe yeah. he misspoke. What he said was he wanted to lure them. That's uh, He's talking about Papadopoulos. Okay, so let's talk about Papadopoulos. Papadopoulos is invited by Stefan Halper to London under false pretenses, we now know, to write a three... Uh, to uh, pay him 3000 bucks to write an energy report on the Middle East. Okay, basically Turkey and Cyprus. And during that time, he used his assistant to try to tell him, hey, come on, is there any spying going on in the Trump campaign? Uh, is there any spying in the Trump campaign? When the whole time they're creating a dossier and feeding it and pretending like there is a collusion going on with the Russians. So what was going on is Stefan Halper was obviously trying to spy on behalf of the FBI. Now, Josh, I'm telling you, that's illegal. And if it was done to Hillary, you would be screaming bloody murder. If the FBI is suspicious that the uh, Russians are trying to have any effect on the campaign or, or on the election, wouldn't it be? And we've no we, the 
intelligence uh, community says this is true, that they did try to affect the elections, wouldn't it make sense to have people out there asking questions to see if this is the case? Well, no. You, now, you, you, Papadopoulos was pleaded guilty to trying to find dirt on Hillary Clinton. That's what the collusion would be, is that the Trump campaign worked with the Russians to release the emails and the information from the from the server that was lost during the election. And that stuff did come out. All those Josh. emails and all that stuff came out, and it was damaging to Clinton. Josh, well, so yeah, the information crazy. itself was very damaging because you're not talking about what they revealed. But what they revealed should have disqualified her from office. But let that go, Josh. You're that's the deep state set up with the hold on, hold on. That's not the issue, the, Josh. Okay, win. I understand. But Josh, the issue is this: they made up the Russia collusion. They then used a spy to try to get information within the Trump campaign. If they were so concerned about Russia interfering in the election or trying to influence the Trump campaign, why didn't they tell? Why didn't they tell candidate Trump? If, if what you're saying is, well, they're concerned about the Russian infiltration of the Trump campaign. Why didn't they warn the candidate? They didn't. Maybe so they what they were doing they is they were spying on him. Now, as for Russian infiltration, you should know this. Who did, Steele, who did Christopher Steele rely on for his information? The Russians. Who gave him all that info? FSB. He actually paid the FSB. So if the deep state is so concerned about Russian infiltration, how come they weren't investigating Christopher Steele? How come they weren't investigating the DNC? How come they weren't investigating Hillary Clinton? The only one that was colluding with the Russians, I can prove to you definitively, was Hillary Clinton and the DNC. So what you had here was a rogue operation or a covert operation to illegally infiltrate and spy on a rival candidate and a rival presidential campaign. Now, I'm telling you this is bigger than Watergate because that was Watergate, but much more. Watergate was spying on the DNC. This is spying on an entire campaign and an entire candidate. So well, I'll tell you what, Jeff. When the Mueller campaign, when the Mueller investigation finally finishes up, we're going to find out everything that happened. And I believe the reason why it hasn't wrapped up yet is because they've got some they've got some good information that there was collusion. Now we've already got people who have been indicted and pled guilty. I know, but it has nothing to do with Russia collusion, Josh. Well, none I'm of this has regarded to Russia collusion. Plus. Up. Plus, Josh, if he's got Trump dead to rights on Russia collusion, as you claim, why is he now fishing for obstruction of justice? If I got him dead to rights that he's an agent of Vladimir Putin, I don't need obstruction of justice. I don't think he's fishing for obstruction of justice. I think it's pr pretty clear that he's so the, doing everything he can. So hold on, let me ask you this. Does the president have the right to fire? Does the president have the right to fire his FBI director? He Under the Constitution? Look, it doesn't look too good when... It doesn't, it, it doesn't too matter too how it looks. Out there. How can the president be indicted, matter. Josh? Just use common sense. How can the president be indicted for legitimately exercising his duly de delineated constitutional authority? He well, has the I right to fire fired. anybody in the executive branch. Well, That's his job. That's his right. Yet? Why hasn't he fired Mueller yet? If he has the right to fire He can. Him. He's being advised yeah. not to for political reasons. Okay, well, all right. That's the same thing as... No, he, he has the right Comey. to fire Comey. Look, Josh, he, he I'm telling right you, Josh, Josh, you know why you guys lost? You ran the lousiest candidate in American history. She sucks. She called us deplorables. She never visited Michigan or Wisconsin. She insulted working class voters all across the Midwest. She... Puh, spit in their faces. That's why you lost. Now, instead of saying, let's win the midterms, let's win the election in 2020, you're trying to relitigate 2016. My friends, that's un American. I'm just telling you. Okay. The CIA made some history today. What is that history? Maybe the third time's the charm. Denise Allen Membrino is in the RKO newsroom with those details. Yes, we've made contact. We have Denise. Yes. Take it away, Denise. The third time is the charm.